the questions we get asked a lot when we start talking defensive assets is everyone's like, okay, I've got, I know bonds and gold defensive, sure. But how much should I have? Like what's, what, what's the, what, is there any rule of thumb or are there, how do you go about thinking about that for, for each individual in, investor? I mean, that, that's really a question for, um, you know, that, that, that um, is driven by a few main effects, factors, I'd say, Owen. So first of all, your investment time horizon. So we've already sort of talked mm-hmm. about that. The longer you are planning to invest, even though we know that it doesn't always end up that way, the more capacity you have to have more growth assets in your portfolio. It's, it's as simple as that. You know, our advice to clients is if you're investing for, um, if you're planning to invest, let's say for six months or a year, there's really no place for growth investments in your portfolio because your chance of making a positive return over that time period is barely over 50-50. You know, it might be 60-40. So, you know, it's, it's no better really than flipping a coin. And, and in my mind, that's speculation. It's not investing. So the way we think about it from a time frame perspective is, you know, what is the asset allocation um, that, you know, based on some level of assumptions is going to give you a very high probability of, of a positive return over that period. And that really drives what percentage should be in those different asset classes. Um, then there's obviously the overlay of all what's your risk capacity. Because um, in addition to knowing, you know, what should be in there theoretically, you know, you want to be confident that, you know, in a drawdown scenario, you'll still stay invested to be able to enjoy the, you know, the positive returns after that time horizon. Um, and that's a conversation, I, you know, I see um, our, our client care team have with our clients whenever markets fall, you know, clients sometimes get nervous and say, look, my, you know, markets are down, I'm, you, know, I, I've, you know, I've lost, you know, two or 3%, let's say in the last six months. And, and we always bring it back to well, what's your time horizon? And they will say, look, I, you know, I'm, I'm investing for seven years to buy a house or I'm investing for 20 years for my super. And so, you know, we iterate that, you know, based on that time horizon, your strategy is correct and, and no one, you know, can accurately and, and consistently pick when markets are going to be going down 2% or up 3%. You know, that's just kind of the noise around the long-term trend and, and no one can pick the noise. And so you might as well just focus on the long-term trend and, and make sure you've got the right mix for your um, time horizon. So time horizon and risk capacity, you know, are really the two that are most important. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, rule of thumb, I would say is if you've got an infinite time horizon, um, like Warren Buffett does for his estate, I think you know his his um, estimate of ninety ten you know makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, for anything less than that, and and most people's are a lot less than that. I actually think people don't have enough defensive assets generally in, in their portfolios. Um, you know, super funds are a little bit of an anomaly because the time horizon for someone in their twenties or thirties is quite long. It might be forty years or so. Um, but, you know, a, a lot of people investing their discretionary savings for some sort of goal, you know, saving up for a wedding or a holiday or, or just, you know, saving up to buy a house one day, you know, your time horizon might be five years or seven years or so. And, and for that sort of time horizon, um, you know, for our clients, um, at least, you know, we recommend at least a 20% allocation to defensive assets. And our view is it doesn't really harm your returns too much, but it adds a huge um, improvement in the quality of your returns. And by quality of returns, I mean how much downside you have to experience.